In this video today, I'm going to show you on how you can edit your images from looking like this to this. Hi guys, my name is Gaurav and I'm a travel and wedding photographer based in Birmingham, England. Recently, I've been getting quite a few questions on how I edit or process my photos and what sort of filters I use, specifically my travel photos. So I thought I'll go ahead and make a video tutorial about it. Before we continue any further guys, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that other people can benefit from this type of information. So a bit about the shooting process and thinking behind this particular image. This is now the edited version and it wasn't the only image I captured during the process. As you can see there were actually four. Whenever possible I aim to capture as many frames without being a nuisance to the subject or anyone around me. This is very important, you need to take that into consideration every time you take photos, especially when you're in another country. If you have a look at the first frame for example, and let me just make the background dark so you can see this, you can see that it was captured at 7.23 in the morning in 50 seconds and the last frame was captured at 7 23 and 56 seconds so within six seconds i was able to capture four frames could have taken more sure considering the camera i was using at the time was a nikon d750 which can shoot i think up to 6.5 frames per second or something like that so why didn't i keep my finger on the trigger it was intentional it allowed me to recompose and in many cases for my subject to change their expression. If I sat there for a minute or two and kept shooting, then I can guarantee you he wouldn't be smiling. Instead, I chose to spend the rest of my time I had left to genuinely show interest and interact with them. You can even go ahead and show them the photos from the back of your camera. Even after backing up my photos, I generally don't delete them from my memory cards, especially when I'm traveling. The memory cards these days can store so much that you never actually need to delete them plus it's an extra backup if anything was to happen to your hard drive there's one trick I use is that I show my subject photos from another city so for example in this case I just had to press forward on my camera and I had access to my photos from the start of my trip which was Delhi if you show someone photos of other people you have captured then they are more open to letting you capture theirs if that makes sense. In India, however, that's never an issue. People love having their photos taken, which is why I love the place. Let me just change the background back to white again. And the reason why I do this is because if the background's black, you automatically underexpose your images. Uh, they appear a lot brighter on a black background. So look at this. So what am I doing here? Let me just go ahead and reset this. Why is this image so dark? It's because I aim to retain the details in the highlights. This bit here. Had I exposed for his face, then I would have lost all the details in the highlights, which is very, very difficult to recover, even if you're shooting raw in a lot of the cases. Whereas underexposed areas, I know I can recover in post-processing. If I just move the exposure slider up, you can see face is good but the highlights are blown out now had I taken the image originally like this it would have been very difficult to recover the highlights let's just go and reset that with regards to the editing style I initially started off trying to replicate the Kodachrome film stock for those of you who aren't familiar with Kodachrome you will instantly recognize this image from one of my all-time favorite photographers Steve McCurry it's called the Afghan girl I love everything about this image just look at it the colors are just phenomenal. Because Kodachrome was decommissioned around the year 2006, I think, due to complications with its developing process, we no longer have access to it. After years and years of experimenting, I was able to develop a style not exactly like Kodachrome, but something I was satisfied with and can uh, use on many of my travel photos. Now, a bit of a disclaimer. This isn't a one size fits all, just like every other preset, to be honest you will still need to make slight adjustments to suit your lighting conditions. 
just to quickly go over some of the specifications before we begin editing. So what gear did I use to capture this? Um, I use a Icon D750 with the 24 to 70 mm f2.8 lens. This particular shot was captured at ISO 640 29 mm focal length at 1 60th of a second. With that said, let's crack on with the editing. Let's just reset this again. All right, so to start off with, I'd like to change my color profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it's kind of recovered a little bit more of the details. So I'm just gonna run through this very quickly and you guys can follow along. For the temperature, I'm gonna input a value of 4194. And then for tint, we're gonna go minus 23. Exposure is going to be around 0 0.46. Well, not around, exactly 0 0.46. And contrast is gonna be minus 16. Highlights, minus 52. Shadows, plus 87. Whites, minus 63. And blacks, we're gonna leave the blacks alone. Moving on to vibrance going to be minus 10 and then saturation minus 36 and then moving on to the curves adjustments the tone curves we're going to click on this here the point curves so we can add points in this first point here which is going to click anywhere on the line and we're going to input a value of 55 and output value of 61 second point we're going to input a value of 186 and then the output to 178 and then finally the third point here we're going to input a value of 253 and an output value of 229 and moving on to the red channel here in the curves this first point we're going to input a value of 39 followed by an output value of 19 Second point, input value 86, output value 62. Third point, input value 122, output value 124. Fourth point, input value 186, output value 193. And then the final point up here, we're going to set the input value of 255, and then the output value 250. Let's go to the green channel. The input value for this is going to be, the first point is going to be 41. Output value is going to be 20. Second point, input value is going to be 85 and the output value is going to be 63. Third point, input value is going to be 123 output value is going to be 126 fourth point input value is going to be 198 and then the output value is going to be 200 and the final point at the top here the input values for that we're going to leave that at 255 and the output is going to be 246 and finally the blue channel first point input value will be 40 and then the output value will be 18 for the second point input value is going to be 86 output value is going to be 62 third point input value is going to be 123 output value is going to be 126 and then fourth point input value is going to be 178 and then the output's going to be 193. Finally, this last point up here, input's going to be 255, output's going to be 239. And that's it for the curves adjustments. Moving on to hue, saturation, and luminance. So again, I'm gonna quickly run through this going to be working on the hue range first so so the red value is going to be minus three 
minus 6 for orange, plus 11 for yellow, plus 5 for green. And I'm going to leave the rest of these. And for saturation, we're going to leave the reds. For orange, we're going to go plus 5, minus 34, minus 77 for the green, plus 13 for the aqua, minus 40 for the blue, minus 20 for the purple, and 10 for the magenta. Right, so for the luminance value, we're going to go minus 7 for the reds, minus 10 for the orange, plus 32 for the yellow, 20 for the green, 12 for the aqua, minus 10 for the blue, and that's that. So for the color grading, although this is something new in Adobe Lightroom, um, it's actually imported all my settings from my previous edits and, it, and it's adjusted them accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the values anyway. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the shadows range here and we're going to input a hue value of 45 and a saturation value of five. And what we're also going to do is we're going to increase the blending to 100%. We're not gonna do anything to the midtones. The highlights we're going to adjust. So for the highlights, we're going to set the hue value of 202 and the saturation value of 16. And that's it for the color grading tab. Last but not least, the calibration values. So here, we're going to click into the shadows value box and we're going to increase the tint by plus three. The red primary values, we're going to increase the hue by 41 and saturation by 17. The green primary, we're going to increase by 33 and saturation by minus two. Finally, the blue primary, we're going to decrease by 30, minus 30, and increase the saturation value by 40. And there we have it. Now, I know it doesn't look exactly like the final edit. It's because I applied a radial filter. So let's just go ahead and do that. I didn't go too crazy on this one. I uh, just applied it right about here. I increased the exposure. I think it was about 1.1. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's about right. And then I increase the shadows as well, about 25, 28, 24, that'll do. Let's have a look at that. And what I also did was I got the adjustment brush and I put in a value of around 30, I think it was. And I went and brushed in all the dark areas, not to, not to, completely expose them but not to leave them in the dark so much and finally let's go ahead and apply a crop to this image There we go. And that's how we went from something like this to this. Now, obviously it wasn't that straightforward. I didn't go and put in a bunch of numbers just to get it to look like this. It, it does take a bit of trial and error. So when you do go ahead and put, the, and put these numbers on your image, um, it's not going to exactly look like this. You will still need to adjust uh, some of the values here just to make sure so for example, you may not need to Push the shadows out a lot. I had to for this image for obvious reasons 
again this is the stuff that's worked for me i'm not saying this is the right or this is the wrong way of doing things um, i'm sure everybody has their own way of uh, processing images but this is what's worked for me be sure to hit the like and subscribe button guys if you think yourself or anybody else would benefit from this sort of information what that does is the youtube algorithm will help promote this video so you can reach more people so that they can benefit from this knowledge also what that does is it helps me identify what type of content you guys like so i can make more of these videos going forward also be sure to check out my instagram profile guys uh, i have many more images just like this one and just drop me a comment below if you want to see the editing process behind any of my other images thanks again for sticking around until the end and i shall see you for the next one